Spacehead module essentially acts as a as an extension uh, to the mid deck of the space shuttle, allowing uh, experiments to be stowed along in uh, mid deck lockers uh, seen on the right hand side of this television view. On board Spacehead before this flight are 20 different experiments that have been operating uh, for the past three days.
Good morning from the flight deck of Discovery. We're uh, in preparations, final preparations for our rendezvous with Mir, which will occur in a couple of hours. We'll initiate uh, the, the final portion uh, and enter the checklist here in a couple of hours. I thought I'd walk around the cockpit or float around the cockpit and show you a little bit about what we'll be doing in the next uh, four hours. Uh, both Eileen and I will be up in the forward part of the flight deck in our seats uh, for the first part of the rendezvous. And let me step back just a second. Uh, the very first maneuver that we accomplished for the rendezvous occurred at launch. Uh, we waited until the launch pad was in the plane of the mirror, and then we quickly launched into that plane. Ever since launch, we've been doing a couple of burns to optimize the trajectory in preparation for the rendezvous. When we get into the final portion of the rendezvous timeline here in an hour or two, uh, Eileen and I will both be in our uh, forward flight deck seats. Most of the burns that we accomplished at that point will be targeted by the ground, or I guess all of them will be targeted by the ground. It's all done automatically by computers. We just verify the data and enter it into the keyboards uh, and then execute the burn. As we get into the middle portion of the rendezvous, uh, it becomes ground targeted. Uh, we have onboard steering, but it's a manually flown burn. We will actually control the burn manually via that ground targeting. Eventually we go to onboard targeting where the sensors onboard the vehicle are a little bit more accurate than the ground tracking uh, solutions. And so we do that manually up here on the front part of the flight deck. As we get into the final portion, I will float to the aft station and we'll perform the last couple of burns uh, before getting into proximity operations from the aft station. I will be looking uh, out the overhead windows facing backwards in the vehicle, but of course in space everything is relative, so it doesn't matter. We have a set of controls back here, and we can fly translations of, of our vehicle with this hand controller and rotations from this hand controller, although the rotations are typically uh, all done automatically. We will acquire a visual sight of the mirror at this overhead window, and I have a COAS sight or a hard-mounted manual sight in the overhead window when all else fails. Mike is going to tell you a little bit about his magic devices and his ranging sensors. When all else fails, if, if they start acting uh, funny or the radar starts walking around on the mirror giving us bad navigation, we always have the old uh, iron sight out the top window, which never moves and there's no software, and so it's a reliable piece of gear and we just fly uh, visually. As we panel out around over to the port side of the vehicle, uh, I'll take the camera and I'll offer the mic to Mike and he'll tell you a little bit about his magic sensors. And Houston, while uh, Jim is over there on the uh, starboard side looking out over the overhead window, up that way, uh, basically Vladimir, myself and Eileen will be on the flight deck um, supporting him and uh, we'll be using the rendezvous tools. And these are computers that we have set up specifically that will allow us to plot the rendezvous that's going on here and on here. And we'll have trajectory displays from our different sensors that are in the payload bay. I actually have a handheld laser also that I will shoot out of the window and I will be pointing it up out of the overhead. Top laser is really no different from anything that the police would use to do uh, traffic t traffic patrol monitoring, and uh, we can basically point it out of the window and pull the trigger, and I get a readout on the back of it as to how far away the mirror will be, and also how fast Jim is closing on it. In fact, when I pull the trigger, it will actually be displayed back here on these computers, and I can take those uh, range marks and put them into the computer and get an idea as to how our trajectory towards the mirror is progressing. Uh, we also have a, uh, a sensor in the payload bay that is uh, called the trajectory control sensor and it's also a laser driven system and it will be uh, scanning for the mirror uh, from the bay and I will be displaying that data on these computers also and Jim will use those to control his approach in the final stages as we get close to the mirror.
Vadima Titov will be uh, right behind me and he will be probably doing most of the photography on the flight deck. We have a whole array of cameras behind Jim. And also uh, we have down here, towards the base of the floor of the flight deck, we have the, uh, the Mir VHF radio. And this is a simple VHF system that ties both the mission control center and the flight deck here on uh, Discovery and also the Mir spacecraft together. It allows us to talk to the Mir cosmonauts and they also to us. And Vladimir will be our chief interface on that radio, although I do think that Jim will probably be speaking on it also. Once we've made our closest approach to Mir, we are going to uh, back away to at least 450 feet and then start a slow climb up around Mir to, uh, high up above it. And while we're doing that, we will keep our payload bay pointed the whole time towards the Mir spacecraft. And we'll be doing this at 400 feet. This will take about uh, 45 minutes to do one full orbit, or one full circle around the Mir uh, during one orbit. And during this time, we'll be running a, uh, the IMAX camera system in the payload bay, taking photographs of the Mir at different orientations. We'll also use a lot of Hasselblad and um, 16 millimeter movie. We hope to see some very spectacular shots as we go through sunrise and sunset. This is all done, as you know, in preparation for STS-71, which will occur later on in the year, the first docking flight that Hoot Gibson uh, will, will fly. What we hope to accomplish today is an evaluation of the ranging sensors, an evaluation of the handling qualities, uh, evaluation of the procedures used, and the interfaces between our two countries uh, in preparation for those docking flights that will come uh, as we close out this decade. And from the flight deck of Discovery, thank you very much. This is Mission Control Houston. We continue to receive a television image from Discovery as uh, Discovery passes uh, to the west of Australia of uh, the Mir space station currently lying less than 200 nautical miles ahead. Mir is the uh, steady bright light located in the upper half of the upper center of the television image. Discovery just moving into sunset. Also visible in the image are uh, pieces of ice and uh, fuel that has leaked uh, from steering jets and uh, also uh, other such items that uh, remain with the shuttle as it circles in orbit and are very visible during uh, times of sunrise and sunset. Uh, those particles show up very brightly. Discovery, good config. Go for the burn. Roger, go for the burn. Discovery for Wax. Go ahead, he's listening. Okay, Eileen, we have been uh, watching you all on the flight deck, and we have been looking at your smiles, so some of this information may have gotten to you by another means, but you are go to approach to 10 meters. Thank you very much, Story, and uh, to everybody who worked the issue, again, thank you very much. You're welcome and thank you for all you have done. And the go to 10 meters is based on uh, three conditions. Ready to copy? Yes, sir. That right 
RCS manifold be closed and not leaking prior to 300 meters, that we will approach no closer than 10 meters with any further loss of low Z redundancy. <clears throat> you can't open up that manifold to regain low Z capability if it's required and then back out to 400 feet and hold. This test was originally scheduled for a couple of hours from now, but uh, due to the fact that uh, we acquired our VHS communication links uh, much earlier than we anticipated, the um, test was moved up to uh, help ease some of the timeline later on as we get down to our rendezvous. Фантастическая идет, Лен. Я снимал. Да так... <смех> а это, это с видика, что ли? Еля? На потокам. Ну просто у нас сейчас э, уш, он ушел из поля зрения всех иллюминаторов. А, это а вы с, с видика, да? Да. Понятно. Это с какой Это было 500 метров. 500 метров. Вот мы соображаем, это, кажется, наша картинка. Вот это? Да. Да, видно, слева нос высовывается, шатловский, видно. Да. А, так, это вот Степан уже снимает отсюда из девятого иллюминатора. Ага, Давай, принято. Видим, видим. Хорошо, прямо в центре экрана, все отлично идет. Картинка хорошая очень, хорошая. А вот в эти два окошка с прямоугольных мы их, их не показывали. Рукой нам махали. Правда? Вот жалко, сейчас не видно было. Панч, отличная картинка идет. Это Валера уже снимает. Ой, Валерий Владимирович, я даже не заметил, как оператор меняется. Так я сказала, смена камеры пошла. А, вот так, ну. Да. Ну извини. Ну бывает.
Так, ну это вот Степанович еще тоже показывал там с другой иллюминатора. Степанович еще тоже с другого иллюминатора показывал кусочек. Ага. Лен, а можно их попросить, чтобы кто-нибудь шатл вот в иллюминатор бы что-нибудь ручкой сделал? Ну что делать? Сейчас, подожди, я тогда сменю гарнитур. Потому что сейчас вот как раз идеальные картинки для такого момента. Лена Степанович, тогда скажи, чтобы вы вдвоем договорились, и тогда пять с плюсом будет. В левом иллюминаторе, точно. Отлично. Это Титов шлет вам привет. Здорово видно, вот ладонь. Видно, да. О, О, видно, мой иллюминатор Титова. Так пусть вылезает вот. теперь, Discovery for Wakes. Go ahead. You have a go for the approach to 10 meters, starting that on time to arrive at a closest approach at 13 hours, 58 minutes. Okay, I understand the go for the approach. Thank you. Will Mike? Discovery and Mir are now crossing what is known as the Terminator, or the point where uh, daylight turns to darkness. The uh, two vehicles will be uh, flying with, in the dark with uh, just uh, lights, running lights on them for the uh, next several minutes as uh, the uh, distance between the two spacecraft slowly increases. By the time we reach our close approach point, however, the uh, two spacecraft should be uh, back in the daylight. Uh, this is views uh, on board uh, space station Mir of uh, uh, cosmonauts aboard the vehicle. Uh, Dr. Valery, Valery Polyakov uh, now holding the endurance record for time in space. He's uh, on his 394th day in space. Also uh, in view is uh, Elena Kondakova, who was launched 126 days ago along with the commander who's operating the camera. Alexander Viktorenko. Use uh, once again out the porthole of the uh, Mir module back toward uh, Space Shuttle Discovery. The two vehicles have now uh, uh, obviously moved into darkness and we should be uh, acquiring a signal from Discovery of the space station in just a few minutes as uh, Discovery will move back within range of its uh, uh, KU band antenna tracking uh, satellite. Okay. Лен, да, вот тебе тут передают <laughs> Юра. Агата, Агатики передает привет вам. Ой, привет Больш... от нас, от всех. Большой привет вам. Кланяться. Да. вы довольны за вас. Мой красный огонячек видели? А мы тоже довольны. И за них, и за тебя. This is Mission Control Houston. This picture of the Russian space station Mir is being provided to us by the low-light-level cameras on board Discovery. 
Uh, physician Valery Polyakov, one of the Mir crew members, is uh, occasionally shining a flashlight at the crew members uh, to uh, help with the. Uh, and we're thinking maybe you need to pick up our dot a little bit. Somewhat here. sending them a message from one of the windows of the pa of the uh, Mir station. The uh, Mir crew members also have asked. Uh, veteran cosmonaut and STS-63 mission specialist and, uh, Vladimir Titov for um, any information the, uh, about line, how the mirror looks. In, a bit. in this particular camera Both view we can over. see actually see three uh, of the mirror uh, modules as you. and a uh, Soyuz yeah. spacecraft yeah. attached yeah. to the mirror yeah. station. Yeah. At the top of the picture the uh, smallest module is the Kavant 1 module. In the center, uh, where the uh, where one of the cosmonauts is using a flashlight to uh, signal the Mir crew, is the Mir core module, and looking directly at the orbiter is the uh, Crystal module. At the bottom of this picture is one of the uh, Soyuz capsules, which the crew members use to go to and from the space station. This is a view from one of the uh, cameras inside the. Uh, crew cabin of Discovery. Uh, this uh, provides a much better view of the Crystal module. Discovery is now 65 feet away from the uh, space station mirror. Uh, that means we only have about uh, 30 or so feet to go before we reach our point of closest approach. This uh, particular picture is from Mir. And uh, all rendezvous activities continue to go very smoothly. All orbiter systems are functioning as expected. Discovery and Mira now just south of the Kamchatka Peninsula and just to the uh, east of Japan. The two vehicles are about to start a, a southeasterly sweep above the uh, Pacific Ocean on Mir's 57th orbit of the mission and, uh, dis and well, on Discovery's 57th orbit of the mission and on Mir's 15th orbit of the day. So this is Mission Control, Kaliningrad. These uh, views now from uh, Discovery looking back toward uh, the Mir space station. Uh, one of the uh, items to note uh, of interest is there is a pair of solar rays uh, of the triple set here uh, that will be moved uh, later on from the uh, core, core module area to the uh, uh, crystal module. Those solar rays uh, fold up similar to the uh, solar rays on the Hubble Space Telescope. Those arrays will be folded up and moved by uh, uh, two cosmonauts uh, that will conduct a spacewalk during the uh, Mir 18 mission, which is scheduled for launch on March 14th. That mission will carry uh, U.S. astronaut uh, Dr. Norman Thaggard, uh, the uh, uh, other members uh, of that uh, mission, again, which is scheduled uh, for March 14th, are uh, Vladimir Dezhirov, who will be the commander of that mission, along with Gennady Strekolov, who will be the flight engineer. Those two cosmonauts will conduct the spacewalk, again, while Norman Thaggard uh, watches over the uh, systems aboard the space station Mir. That's scheduled, again, for launch uh, in March, March 14th. He links. Rendezvous officer uh, Joe Williams reports that we are right on our rendezvous profile and uh, just about a minute and a half or so away from our point of closest approach. Once we reach that point, Commander Jim Weatherby will uh, put the brakes on Discovery, so to speak, and the uh, orbiter will hold its position for about 10 minutes before backing away. <laughs> As far, the, as far as the discussions between the two vehicles go, uh, Flight Engineer Elena Kondakova is watching the mirror approach from the uh, small porthole that is at the uh, top of the, um, the uh, view 
from discovery. It's that uh, small circular dark spot. Uh, she has asked the uh, crew members from discovery several times whether or not they can see her wave. Earlier, uh, the uh, mirror cameras were able to pick up a, a picture of Vladimir Titov from the windows of the uh, orbiter. Discovery is now about 44 feet away from here. At last report from Discovery, the uh, orbiter was about 44 feet away from Mir. The uh, crew was in the process of uh, putting on the brakes and uh, slowing the motion in between the two spacecraft. This particular view is from a camera in the SpaceHab module. Uh, this is a, a camera that is very near the position where the uh, docking camera will be when Atlantis docks with Mir later this year. The uh, round structure in the center of this view is the docking port on the Crystal module. That is the uh, docking port which Atlantis will use when the docking actually takes place. Mir, discovery. discovery for Veloja. Closer together. We are bringing our nations closer together. The next time we approach, we will shake your hand, and together we will lead our world into the next millennium. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, that was Jim Weatherby uh, expressing his uh, feelings at this historic moment. Two left. In response, uh, Alexander Viktrenko, the commander of the Mir crew, uh, s expressed his affection uh, for the STS-63 crew and his pride at this moment in time. He said that that we were one and we were human, and that uh, they, all the crew members on orbit right now, were involved in the uh, greatest profession God could give anyone. Vic Treko also has added that uh, this moment in time is uh, almost like a fairy tale. It's almost too good to be true. This particular view from Discovery will pr provides us with uh, the best view we may get of the Amir core module. The Amir core module, which is the uh, center module, is the uh, central portion of the station. Just incredible, but it really is amazing how beautiful their vehicle is. Just simply beautiful. It is just simply stunning. I mean, even if we weren't here, if I just saw a picture of it up. Incredible. And we sure enjoyed all the video. This is some videotape from the uh, Mir space station that the cosmonauts took during our uh, close approach and our rendezvous activities. They are currently feeding this uh, to the ground via the uh, Mission Control Center in Kaliningrad. Uh, 
Discovery has uh, started a, a slow ascent from the uh, velocity vector. Meanwhile, we're getting live pictures from inside the Amir space station. This is uh, physician Dr. Valery Polyakov. He uh, currently has the uh, record for the most time spent on orbit by uh, any human. Go ahead, Discovery. Yes, sir, as the sun came up, they were in the maneuver, of course, and uh, they're firing jets, we're firing jets, their arrays are moving. It's a beautiful sight. It's a great world. It is a great world, Wanks. Up there and down here. Discovery is now slightly above the, uh, is, well, is about uh, 45 degrees uh, above the velocity vector as it moves to the uh, point that is uh, directly above the space station mirror for our separation burn. That separation burn should take place in about 3 minutes and 15 seconds and will bring to a conclusion our rendezvous activities for today. The uh, flight control team here in Houston is very pleased with today's activities and uh, throughout the, or occasionally throughout the day we have uh, gotten pictures uh, of the Mission Control Center in uh, Russia and there are uh, very happy faces located there as well. We are now receiving a live picture from uh, Discovery's flight deck as the STS-63 crew wraps up its uh, rendezvous activities for the day. In the white shirt is STS-63 pilot Eileen Collins. Uh, in the forward part of this view in the red shirt is Bernard Harris, who's our payload commander. And in the, uh, the uh, back part of this particular view is mission specialist Mike Fole. Uh, 
Вот, а, Алин, Алин передает привет. А, ну, спасибо. Скажи, что мы ее а, по-братски целуем, поздравляем. И желаем ей счастья, удачи всегда. Ну и нам будущих встреч всем вместе. Добрый день, это Айлин. Добрый день, Айлин. Нам очень приятно услышать твой приятный голос. Uh, спасибо. I want to say that Mir is very beautiful and it was very shiny and we are very happy to meet you in the sky. Айлин, uh, ваш корабль. Ваш Discovery тоже великолепен. И нам особенно приятно было за ним наблюдать, зная, что на... ты находишься в этом корабле еще и пилотом. Всего самого доброго тебе. Спасибо. До свидания. Uh, до свидания. Счастливо. Ну вот, э, Лена попрактиковалась в языке. Ладно, я смотрю, они все как-то усердно изучают русский язык, да? Да, между прочим, все нас сейчас изучает русский язык. Понятно. Слушай, вот я смотрю на восьмое. Телефонные переговоры Мир Дискавери. Hello? Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. I didn't know you were on the line. Congratulations. Oh, well, thank you very much, sir. And it's an honor to be talking to you. Thanks for calling. I'm glad to do it. Uh, we we're all uh, following you with great anticipation and, and we're all so impressed you know this really proves I think that Russians and Americans can work together and that we can make this International Space Station project successful and I can't tell you how much I appreciate all the work that all of you have done to that end well we agree sir uh, it's uh, what I kept thinking as we were rendezvousing on Mir was it's a great world Uh, they have a beautiful spaceship, and we have a beautiful spaceship built by uh, Americans. We met the people that built their spaceship. Uh, they love their space program. We love our space program. And I think together it'll be a lot better. Well, we're confident that it will. As you know, this whole mission is a number of firsts. You're the first person to ever command uh, our efforts to rendezvous with a Russian uh, space vehicle and uh i know that eileen collins is the first woman ever to pilot a space shuttle so uh eileen i suppose you have literally shown young women all across the world they can fly as high as their dreams will take them yes and i'd like to say i think this is one of the greatest jobs in the world and uh you know for any young people out there if you work hard enough you can always always reach your dreams Well, you certainly proved that. <laughs> Look at that. We enjoy watching the microphone there. I want to ask Dr. Harris to pick it up as it flies toward him. I want to, he's going to set another milestone by becoming the first African-American to walk in space. Uh, so you'll be floating on air, but be yes, sure you... Sir, I'm really looking forward to that uh, a couple of days from now. But I know I won't be, I may be the first, but I won't be the last. No, you won't be the last. We'll have a lot more if we have uh, you as an example. I'd also like to say something to uh, our Russian partner in space, Vladimir Titov, uh, who's one of the world's most experienced space travelers, and uh, he's the first cosmonaut to see the mirror from an American spacecraft. So I'd like to give you a chance to say anything you'd like to the American people, Mr. Titov. And good day, Mr. President. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'm very happy uh, I, um, uh, I use um, 
uh, with possibility to have uh, for this great flight. And right now, our press conference, our conversation, listen on the board station mirror, and the uh, crew on board station mirror uh, sent for you uh, great uh, hello. Well, thank you very much. I want to say to all of you again that this is very exciting for us. And, you know, the, the vice president's here with me, uh, along with Dan Golden and, and uh, our science advisor, Dr. Jack Gibbons. And we have supported this space program so strongly. And it's been, uh, as you know, somewhat controversial in the United States in the past. But I think that people uh, all over our country and all over the world will be seeing you today and will say, you know, this is something worth doing. And you've, you, all of you have made us very proud. I can't thank you enough. Well, we thank you very much for your support, Mr. President. We know you've done a lot of work over the last several years uh, in, in getting us this far. There's a lot of people around our country and a lot of people in Russia that we owe a great deal of thanks. And, of course, it starts right at the very top. So thank you very much for your support. You're welcome. And, of course, we want to say hello to Michael and Janice, too, uh, with whom we haven't talked. We're proud of all of you. Have a wonderful time and come home safe and sound. Give us Thank you. As you saw today, Tim Weatherby does a great job of flying this vehicle, and we're looking forward to seeing his landing. <laughs> I'll bet you are. <laughs> so it'll be a very good one, I'm quite sure. That's right. Well, come home to us. We're proud of you. Goodbye. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. This is Mission Control, Houston. Discovery is currently 211 nautical miles above South America, just crossing at the uh, borders of Peru, Brazil, and Bolivia as it continues on orbit number 61 of this flight. As the crew of six astronauts on board Discovery sleeps, the flight controllers here in the flight control room in Houston are continuing to monitor all systems on board the orbiter and also to take a look at the timeline for flight day five activities that will greet the crew when they awake at 12.52 a.m. Central Time to begin that flight day five on orbit. The crew had a very busy, very successful, and very historic day today, a day that saw American and Russian spacecraft draw within 37 feet of one another. With Commander Jim Weatherby at the controls, 
The crew of astronauts on board Discovery intersected Mir's velocity vector at a distance of about 400 feet from that space station. That occurred at 12.16 p.m. Central Time today. All told, Discovery spent almost two hours on that velocity vector. That is an imaginary line that's drawn in the direction of travel of the Mir space station. During that time, Discovery slowly edged forward toward the space station, finally holding at a distance of uh, 37 feet before edging away to begin a fly around and photographic survey of that space station. All of the procedures and, and uh, systems worked perfectly in supporting rendezvous activities today. Those procedures were developed over the past year by, by teams of American and Russian flight controllers in support of planned joint operations between the U.S. and Russia. STS-63 was the first of seven planned missions. Uh, in uh, June of this year, STS-71 will mark the first time an American shuttle actually docks with the Mir space station, and STS-63 is providing valuable data on what to expect and how to accomplish that planned rendezvous. Discovery continues to send video of the Earth below as it circles above at 210 nautical miles, currently tracking to the northeast over the South American continent on an orbit that will take it across over the Pacific Atlantic Ocean. As the crew on board sleeps, the flight controllers are continuing to support the timeline activities in preparation for tomorrow's flight day five on orbit. And our next television event will be a replay of the NASA budget briefing from earlier today with NASA Administrator Daniel Golden. That briefing will begin at 7 p.m. Central Time and will last approximately 20 minutes. At a mission elapsed time of three days, 19 hours, 32 minutes, this is Mission Control Houston.